Hello, podcast listeners. This is What Scares Us, a podcast brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library, where four friends try to discuss movies that perhaps make us wish we had packed extra batteries for that flashlight before getting (laughs) trapped underground with our adventurous besties. I'm Amanda, and I'm joined by three other staff members of the library. Hi, I'm Allison. My name is Matt. I'm Christopher. All right, and today we are here to discuss the 2005 British horror film, The Descent, written and directed by Neil Marshall. I chose it for today's episode because I recently watched it for the first time, and amazingly, it held my attention the whole time. I didn't pick up my phone, and it actually scared me, which is rare in a movie or a horror movie. So um, I also, it's from an era of horror films that I haven't seen very many of, and I also love the fact that it had an all-female cast. So I was excited to come across a new-to-me horror movie that was actually really good. So what is this movie, The Descent? The movie follows six women who enter an underground cave system and struggle to survive against the humanoid creatures they find inside. Friendships are tested as they fiercely battle these creatures and try to get out. Uh, So before we get into the film, a couple of fun facts. Even though the movie is set in the United States, the movie was filmed in the U.K., with some exterior shots in Scotland. The filmmakers thought it was too dangerous and time-consuming to shoot in a real cave, so the interior scenes were filmed on sets they built, which looked really, really cool in the -the behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, The filmmakers originally planned for the cast to be both male and female, but Marshall's business partner realized that horror films rarely have all-female casts. Ha! So Marshall cast all women, and to avoid making them cliched, he solicited advice from some female friends. Uh, The film opened in the UK in 2005, and then in the United States at Sundance in 06, and then it was released in theaters, and it was a box office success. Writer-director Marshall cites the film's Deliverance, The Shining, and Alien as inspiration. He also calls out Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Thing, and a sequel was actually released in 2009, and the movie The Descent has two endings, one was released in the UK and one in the US version and we'll discuss both of those endings when we get to the the end of the film. So there's a lot to talk about in this movie, but before we get to that, there will be spoilers galore and eventually we're probably going to spoil the sequel during this too. So if you yes. haven't seen one or both and it's important to you to see the sequel, do that first cuz it's going to be impossible for us to not talk about the sequel at some point even though I have not personally seen it. Mm. Um I know you have all seen this movie, so tell me, what is your relationship? How do you tell me something before we get into it? I'll start. I saw this movie in the theater with my non-phantasm brother. <laughs> and <laughs> I have to say, I was so uh, scared and uh, upset seeing this. I was practically in his lap because <laughs> it was it really bothered me. And I haven't seen it since then, and I just rewatched it for the podcast. And there was a point where I thought I was just going to get throw up. I felt uh, so sick, and I had to stop the movie. Um, it, so it really bothered me, and I love it. I think I know the exact part oh where you were going to barf. I <laughs> had a really similar experience with this movie. I So this came out summer 2006, and I was seeing a lot of stuff in the theater because that was right when I was out of high school. And my friends and I were out driving around, being stupid, eating fast food. (laughs) 16 in Ann Arbor. Oh, quality 16. I miss it. I miss it a lot. Um, There were, I was looking at horror movies that were released that year. There were a ton of them. I saw a lot of movies that summer. Silent Hill, Hills of Eyes. There was a Texas Chainsaw, like, prequel thing that came out that sucks. (laughs) Um what else came out? There was like when a stranger calls Final Destination three, which oh my is my God. favorite of those. Pan's Labyrinth. There was a bad underworld movie. There were a, the Wicker Man with Nicolas Cage. There was wow. a, a lot of shit that came out with an emphasis on shit. Like a lot of it was bad. <laughs> so this and I, I feel like this came out later in the summer. My friends and I had pretty low expectations for it, and it's one of the scariest things I've seen in a theater. Mm-hmm. It's like I. We saw it. It might have been opening weekend, um, and I haven't seen it since. And it really holds up. Um, I remember distinctly feeling like this was, I think, three years prior was when they did the Alien director's cut in theaters, and that was like the scariest theater experience I had had as like a, a 
fully functioning adult, <laughs> this this topped it um, for me, and because uh, it combines two absolutely terrifying things like monsters, but more than that, holy shit, caving. Can't oh. imagine anything I want to do less, <laughs> um, especially in this particular scenario that they were in. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Spoiler alert, this movie rules. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it still holds up, too, even yeah. however many years later, like almost 20 years. Wow. Oh, no, we're old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw this in high school. I'm sure I saw it on DVD. I started high school in 2006, so oh, it right. probably was a few years later. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this movie rocks, although I don't have a strong impression of when I watched it the first time. But a few years ago, Christopher and I were talking about horror movies, and he was like, well, what about The Descent? And so we had this really great conversation, and that was one of the conversations that actually sort of kickstarted this podcast. So thank you, Christopher, for bringing nice. that back into <laughs> my brain. Um, and then after we talked about it, I actually watched it again at that time, and then um, learned about a real life uh, incident, which is the scariest thing that I have ever heard of, oh. which I will share with y'all when we get to the cave-in. Oh so. my goodness! I think I know what Nutty you're talking potty? about. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> I watched a documentary about that this year. Yeah. When I was getting ready for bed. The YouTube one or the official one? I. Th- I think I've seen both because it's mm-hmm. so horrific for, with a uh, with the name of the cave being not. Yeah. It's pretty silly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. The name of the cave is called Nutty Buddy. Nutty Putty. Putty. Nutty like, Putty. Yeah. Because yeah. it's um, like filled with clay. Yeah. It's a clay. Oh, that sounds like a cute cave to just go hang out and have a picnic. Well, yeah. we'll talk about it. <laughs> Eat some apples. Oh, God. That's, yeah. cool. that's like, that's like. It's like the scariest thing I can imagine. Yes, it is the scariest thing I can imagine. And yeah. it like really fucked me up after I watched I watched the YouTube one, but I found it because the official um, documentary is called The Last Descent. Yes. So I think I have seen that. Okay. We'll get to it. It's oh man, it sucks. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Oof. Well now that we know that everyone has seen this movie, I'm I've seen it I just watched this for the first time a couple weeks ago. And I hadn't again, this is like a black hole of like not seeing these horror films from this era. So when I watched it a couple weeks ago, I was, it was, a, I was, a, I, I was so engrossed. I was afraid. I was just like, what the hell? Is, what, why am I afraid of this movie? It was like terrifying. <laughs> At one point I wanted to like turn it fast forward. And I was like, okay, this is unique. And also I'd never heard of the movie. I was trying to decide what to pick for this. And I had, I was trying to pick something that wasn't like a typical Amanda pick, you know? And I had a list of five of them. And as soon as I watched this, and I was like, well, this is what we're watching. And then when I, I had never heard of it before. And so when I sent it, told you all what we were watching, everyone's like, oh my God, watched it, loved it. And I was like, well, everyone's already seen it. That's boring. But I don't think so. No, no, it's, no, I don't think so at all. Because I'm excited that we found something that's actually scary. Yes. So yeah. we haven't, listener, we have not spoiled anything yet. If you haven't seen this movie and like horror and haven't seen this, just it's actually scary go and watch yeah. it it's freaky it's trippy it's 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 good. a really bad good time it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's a feel bad movie but like it it is it's one of the best modern horror movies i would say it, it's scary it has yeah. so many good like, the storytelling the arc like the characters yeah just the scene the set, it's like they it, didn't try to put too much in yeah. they it has a lot, but they didn't overload it with all this extra shit to make it a good movie. Yeah. It's like an hour and 39 minutes. Perfect yeah. length. So hit stop. Go watch the movie if you have not, because now we're going to spoil the crap out of it. Yeah, quit fucking around. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's actually scary. It's actually scary. Yeah, so I was sure. delighted to find it. Whatever list online, thank you for telling me to watch the movie that everyone else has seen besides me. <laughs> um, so, okay, we're going to try to describe this movie. The movie... I will begin this by saying I will be describing the elements of caving wrong, how they traverse through the caves wrong. I will be mixing up some of the names. It's fine. It doesn't matter. You could literally say two sentences and say the synopsis of this movie. We're going to break it up into sections and see how we do. Hit us Um, up in the comments with all your caving terms. (laughs) Yeah, I will do it all wrong, and I'm just not going to pretend like I'm smart about it because I'm not. They cave, they go up, down, and backwards. Yeah. Um, and then people die. We're going to start off. It has a great opening scene. We'll just discuss the brief opening. Uh, we open on three women whitewater rafting. 
um, which starts us off with a nice little tense scene. We see a man and a child look on from the sidelines, and eventually we see them cheering on the, the mom, who we know is Sarah, that are on the boat. They are After they finish their wet water rafting, they dock. Sarah and her husband, Paul, and daughter say goodbye, and they head off in their car. Sarah and her little girl talk about planning the girl's birthday party. Sarah asks her husband if he's okay and says that he feels a bit distant. And at that moment, their car hits another car head on and metal poles fly off of that car into their car, impaling her husband and daughter. They're dead. Um, Then we cut to a quick birthday cake dream flash sequence and Sarah wakes up in a hospital. She's in a panic. She's running up and down the halls. She's hallucinating and she starts looking for her daughter. She bumps into one of her friends. We find out later is Beth in the hallway and she learns that her daughter and husband are dead. They cry together. They're freaking out. And then another girlfriend who we find out is Juno is in the hallway and she never approaches them and she takes off crying. Cue a title card and one year later. So it starts us off in just a short couple minute scene. It sets up some of the ladies' relationships. It starts us off on a great tense scene with a whitewater raft, and you're like, oh my God, is the horror starting right now? Are they gonna what happens? It shows their adventurous selves. Like it's it's a good beginning. I genuinely forgot that this is how the movie started. I and it's horrific. Um it's almost like like the start of hereditary and and um Midsummer, where it starts with something absolutely awful. Yeah, um, it's not it's not quite as graphic, but you you definitely get what happened to the to the dad and the kid, and like I don't know, there, any movie that any horror movie that has the gall to kill a child, especially at the in the first five minutes, maybe even less than that, less than five minutes, yeah. Sheesh. Also, though, the amount of blood on the back of that pole. <sighs> Yeah. yeah. Oh my They're god. They're both impaled with these metal poles. Yeah. That was juicy. It's yeah. Rough. It's a really great five minute it's a it's a really good a intro. Tough start. <laughs> I also forgot so much about this movie. Well, looking back on it, I was kind of curious why the director chose to have so many people going by in the corridor. Remember that when when in the Sarah hospital? Yeah, yeah, Sarah comes out. Busy hospital. Yeah. It was it's an odd moment it's an odd choice isn't it yes they actually mention it in the um director and cast commentary all the actors are like wow none of these background people give a single shit about about what's happening yeah (laughs) right yeah but maybe maybe that part was in her mind like maybe she wasn't really there it lends to how frantic that moment must have felt for that no one cares because yeah maybe she felt utterly alone something i don't know Mm -hmm. yeah just a tough start. I think that's the only note that I had about that beginning. Tough yeah. start. <laughs> well, because it all happens in the first couple of minutes. So you're like, well, what the hell else is going to happen? You know? Because yeah. even when they were just boating, like, I was already getting a little tense. Like, oh, what's going to happen? That already feels like happen? too big of a risk. Mm-hmm. And then it's all like, oh, they're done. They dock. And there's a little girl. And it's all sweet. And then they get in the car and they get they die. But they're impaled. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. It yeah. just, there's like no break. My first note is, wow, we're one second in and already this is something I would never do. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, it sets it up, though. You you do get a couple hints of some of the relationships of the women. You can, you get the sense of, like, Sarah is, like, she's having this hallucination. She's losing it. Her family is dead. Um, and you it also sets up that these women, you got to set up the premise of these women meeting up together to go and do adventurous things. Like, that's an important thing. Because these are not just, like, six women who are like, hey, college besties, let's go caving. These are women who meet up to specifically do these things, you know? Mm-hmm. So you don't get backstory on how they really know each other or how long they've been doing these things. Yeah. You don't um, get backstory, but immediately you know exactly what everyone's relationship is yeah. to each mm-hmm. other. Like, yeah. We know that the husband and Juno have a thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, we understand like the dynamic between Sarah and her husband and yeah, just so much information mm-hmm. immediately. And then Beth is the one that's in the hallway in the hospital. So you know that like Beth is like, but she's close to Beth. Um, and then Juno takes off cause she a bee. <laughs> so I was thinking about that, Allison, in the next bit of scenes that we haven't gotten there yet, but I think the point is so so well taken that it's tricky to introduce six characters, mm-hmm. introduce their relationships, introduce their backstory without being a, having it really be ham-fisted and like, 
I'm this person. Tons of exposition. Exactly. And And it's like, but it, I I was taking notes on all the characters and it comes across so naturally Mm -hmm. as if you really are just eavesdropping on a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought right away, we're off to a great Mm -hmm. start. This is going to be a great movie. Mm -hmm. So well done. It's really brilliant. Like the effortlessness of the way the writing was, Mm -hmm. because nothing is like, you know, hand fisted at all. Right. And the reason I love this so much, just like with Alien, is because you get these rich, rich characters, just like with Jaws, too. And, and you know, I, to me, that's what makes a fantastic horror movie. Mm-hmm. And to your point, I didn't think about this till right now, but um, we're introduced to three women at first, and we understand who they are, and then they add an additional three. And even though mm-hmm. I don't know all of the additional three's names, Same. it does, like, help you figure out, like, oh, it's not just, like group of six women it's like these are the three you know here's two sisters and an extra girl who seems Mm -hmm. pretty wild (laughs) holly (laughs) yeah i love holly um yeah but when we were meeting up in the cabin i was trying to figure out like who they were and what their relationships were and that kind of thing um i guess the three actresses did all the white water rafting themselves and they had to take out like a huge insurance policy for them to be able to shoot that um, but the director was complaining on the uh, commentary that the girls were fine. They have like helmets on and like um, uh, life life jackets, but all of the crew were just standing on like slippery rocks on either side uh. of the river. And so he's like, we were in way more danger than these three girls were. <laughs> hmm. Um, and I guess there's a bunch of references to Deliverance in these first couple scenes, but I've never seen that movie. Oh, you should. It's great. I know about the one scene, and that has kept me from watching it. It, uh, it's you should see it. It's great. Yeah? It's a classic. It's really. Um, it's it's still very upsetting. It's a and it's an it's an intense movie, and it huh. it holds up. Mm-hmm. I watched I wa- it within the last uh, couple of years. I watched and, it for the first time a couple of years ago. Yeah. I honestly didn't think of it during this because I don't remember enough of the Deliverance or Deliverance. Sorry, I'll Ooh. never forget Deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen things I'd rather. Than. I, you got a pretty mouth, man. Oh, I saw I saw that movie pretty young, oh. so a lot of what was happening was lost on me. But um, but I knew for that it best. was stressful. Yes. yes, and it it's a it's a stressful fish out of water situation and. You also get a young, hunky Burt Reynolds before we all knew that he was an asshole. Really? Oh, you know what? I think yeah. I was watching all the Burt Reynolds movies, and this was probably during some sort of COVID 2021 or 20 <laughs> situation where I was going on tears of things. I'm like, oh, let's watch all the Burt Reynolds movies that the library has. Burt Reynolds with no mustache. <laughs> Not too many movies where he doesn't have a mustache. That's huh. one of them. Anyway, not that that fucking. Movie. But I, I did see also in like the behind the scenes or the interview with the director where he mentions that movie too. Yeah, I guess the river that they're white water rafting on is named after the fictional river. Oh, in that's cool. Yeah. The other thing about this early scene that I thought was really interesting in the commentary is they talk about um, they shot that hospital scene uh, once with a crawler in the background. Hmm. Ooh. Like in the hallway. I would have hated that. He says that he's not really sure why he shot it, but he wanted to like have the footage in case they wanted to sort of um, plant the idea that maybe the crawlers are in Sarah's head later mm. on. Or that they um, work in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're actually orderlies. So yeah. they just split yeah. their time. They between don't the live people. in that cave. They just go to that cave sometimes. <laughs> I do. I mean, I guess I can see the reason why the writer director would have wanted to do that. But having seen the movie and the way it is, it's really good knowing not knowing what the creatures are, what they look like, where they show up, because you're so waiting for them to appear, and it's so effective. Yeah. Like, when they start making yeah. noises and popping up, it's, like, it's it's so scary. They're yeah. they're good creatures, and you don't get, like, like, the, the little scene where they where they talk where they explain what they understand about them is so brief and it's Mm -hmm. such little information it's not like they fundamentally understand everything about them yeah like some characters will just understand everything about a creature Mm -hmm. um which i like yeah i don't want to know their best yeah i don't want to know it at all i (laughs) like yeah i don't give a shit because again they're scary (laughs) they there's that lack of exposition they're leaving it up to the viewer to like subtly find out like we're finding things out along with the women who are experiencing these things Mm -hmm. which is just so fascinating to me yeah um but yeah we'll talk about the creatures oh my god i'm so excited i have one more comment um, I forgot how Final Destination the car crashes with the poles. Yeah. And then um, 
at the end there's is that the that first one or is it the second one? That's the second one, right? That's the one second one's with all the with the highway yes, crash. Yes. And yeah, the yeah, yeah. end of this has like the big uh, logs on the back of the truck, which reminded me of that. But yep. just funny that Final Destination 3 came out the same summer. Yep. Oh god, I love that one. I was almost <laughs> going to pick the first Final Destination cuz I haven't seen it. I was almost going <gasps> to pick that for this. You've never seen it? No. Nope. Oh. I picked a whole stack, you guys. I shouldn't stop talking cuz it might creep up again later. <sighs> I haven't seen any of them. Oh really? man, they're oh, fun. Man. Yeah. Well, some of them are fun. The fourth one is skippable. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Tony Todd's in them. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, those are, those are good. Y'all should y'all should see those Final Destination movies. All one, right. two, and three. I'll watch Deliverance and Final Destination. Now, you're gonna watch. Allison's gonna watch Deliverance. I'm gonna watch the first Final Destination. I gotta watch the first five Phantasms first. Yeah. And you gotta I'm watch behind. the first four Rocky films. <laughs> Wow. We have a lot of work to do. We better get through this. <laughs> All right. So let's head back. So we were in the hospital. Um, uh, Sarah Sarah panics and cue title card to one year later. And we get to one year later. There, we're in another car ride. This time it's a car with Sarah and her friend Beth, the one who she met in the hospital, who was there with her. Um, they're driving down mountain roads. They are headed to a cabin where other girlfriends are gathered to spend a weekend together going caving. The crew is Sarah. Becca, Sam, Juno, Holly, and Beth. They look at an old photo, and Sarah reads, Love Each Day. It's something Paul used to say, she says. They hang out, and the next morning, they, they drive out very early to the cave. After taking a group photo, they get there and start suiting up for their adventure. You see a shot of Juno putting the cave guidebook in the car's glove compartment. To get to the cave, they go on a hike through the woods. One of the girls warns that underground, it is pitch black, and it can cause dehydration, disorientation, claustrophobia, paranoia, panic attacks, visual and oral deterioration. They come across a dead deer, and finally they arrive at the mouth of the cave. Juno says, this is it, and it's a giant hole into the ground where they are going to descend into. So we'll stop it at that point. So this is where they go. We meet all the other girls in the cabin. So the jump scare here, remember that? Which one? Which one? Sarah is looking out the window. Oh, the she window. wakes up. Oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> yes. You know, Gosh, it's no, like you're yeah. thinking there's a million different things that could happen. Somebody's face could show up in the window. She could turn around and there's something. It's like, oh my God, I thought it was great. Yeah. All the jump scares in this movie are so well done. Yes. And for some reason, they're just so creative and they're not effective. cheesy. Right. They're not cheesy. There's mm -mm. nothing truly cheesy in this movie, which is rare. Yeah, for horror. And I'm not expecting them. Like yep. the music didn't get really quiet right before right. or whatever. Yeah. No, it I, felt they felt supernatural. Yeah. throughout the entire movie. Yeah, I I love this setup. Um, traveling to this cabin, like those helicopter shots are. Super clearly influenced by The Shining. Even the music exactly. that's happening is like analog synthesizer mm -hmm. stuff. Opening, yeah. yep. And it like it's not like um, it's not like when something is referenced where you're just like, you dick. Why did you do that? <laughs> it's like it feels like it's like putting on slippers. It rules. <laughs> oh. It's like this. It's it's this like oh yes, that's exactly how they should be setting this up. And then all of the like kind of crosstalk shit that's happening at the cabin when they do finally get there feels like the better um, like set up stuff for the like Friday the 13th movies or something where you're being introduced to all these characters mm -hmm. and seeing how they all interact with each other. And it's just kind of like small talky shit. Mm -hmm. I, I, the atmosphere of that cabin, I want to go stay at that cabin. Yeah. I want to go see where they are except for that fucking cave. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I love all of this setup and like seeing the, the, guide be left in the car you're immediately like oh no you you asshole why'd you do that like that's such a bad idea like lauren and i were talking to this movie a lot even though we had she has seen it 10 times i've only seen it once uh, but we were talking to it like we were in a in a crowded theater <laughs> so, yeah love this opening i love the chemistry between the girls and um I watched the commentary with the director and all of the girls, and they are just exactly like that in real life. Like, it's super fun, like, camaraderie, and um, I actually stopped taking notes halfway through because I realized I was just listening to them hang out and, like, having a great time with mm -hmm. them and 
forgot to, you know, yeah, do it's my just, job. <laughs> it's like six girls hanging out. I mean, they're having some drinks. They're talking about stuff. Um, the one comes out with some pajama, like a full pajama set. And she's like, I got it for Christmas. And it's just like <laughs> like a lady sleepover. I just adored that. Why did they make fun of those yeah. pajamas? I thought they were really I don't nice. Know. I my friends so would never do that. We would, we yeah. would embrace that. We'd, We'd be, be like, like, oh, I'm jealous. That's a great set of pajamas. <laughs> Where did you get them? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it strange how taking a picture is already foreshadowing of something dire that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. That picture scene is great. I you yeah. know, you <clears throat> they they take the picture and it's like the last time they were ever seen alive. The last mm-hmm. time they yeah. were all happy. That's yeah. like yeah. the thumbnail on the Dateline video online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But you can just feel it. Yeah. You can feel this like foreboding like oh man. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think the director It's almost like there was a checklist of awesome horror (laughs) elements, except it's not that obvious. Yeah, Yeah. it's not cheesy, right? It's I don't know how to describe it. Like you all feel, you all understand it, but it's like hard to describe. This is this is this is well done. Not to like punch down on Phantasm, but something that I was talking about (laughs) in Phantasm was like that movie just like doesn't have the right tone to me, but this just does. Like this just this this immediately draws you in. It anybody watching this can can get it and go along for the ride or be like, oh, I know this is going to be fucked up and leave. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's something odd about this movie. And I can't remember since another horror movie that made me feel this way, mm-hmm. like a big theatrical release, you know, horror movie. I just, I can't think of one since 2006 that has made me feel like, oh, this, this gets everything right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even it's weird ending. It's just... It's magical. Like it's yeah. it's so bizarre how it just comes to how I don't know what they did. I don't know. Here's another brain buster for you, Matt. Please. Oh boy. <laughs> Have you thought of any or can you think of any other all female cast in a horror movie since then? I was trying to think of that when it, when one of you mentioned it earlier. Um I can't. I can barely think of a movie period. Maybe the Black an, Christmas remake. <laughs> with oh. an all female cast. <laughs> Barf. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. Sorry. Um uh, I think that came out this anyway around the same time. Um, no, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Maybe there I, is one. I feel but... like there's there is something flickering in my brain right now, <laughs> where there was a movie where I'm like, wow, this is like all women. Big candles. It, and I'm just I can't and, think of anything. And maybe I'm just like, oh no, it's just fucking. It's this movie. I'm just picturing <laughs> this movie. <laughs> like there's this really awesome movie that has just, just women in it. Okay. Well, I mean, if they were. <laughs> Because if they were originally going to make this like male and females who were on the trip together, they could have coupled them off. Like you could have had three different couples that were going, you know, camping or caving together. Yeah. Um, it would have just been a different movie because then they would have had their own, even if they were friends or in relationships yeah. or whatever, they would have had their own. It would have been a completely different. Because here, I like that it was all females and I liked watching their relationships. Because if you've got six females, some are better friends with each other than others. They all have their weird... Th- we know one of them is, ch- is having an affair with one of them's husband. Yeah. Well, like, not anymore. Right. But, well, what, but you know what I mean? There's all of we these... like. Not. There's <laughs> all of these... That's the sequel. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. It's, but you, you don't know... It just sets it up so beautifully. Like, yeah. with having these six women, it's it could have gone in so many places... And I don't know what that this is just a, this is just me, but like I there's something about if it was if there were a bunch of dudes in there, I wouldn't have cared about them getting killed. In yeah. fact, I probably mm-hmm. would have been like, yeah, yeah. Whenever they died. <laughs> they were. I don't know why. Like the stakes felt right in this, mm-hmm. and it felt like there were like even though everybody was on board with the general idea of spelunking and going caving, like eventually when things take a turn that we'll get to in a second here, like. Everybody's scared and you feel sympathy for mm-hmm. everyone mm-hmm. at this point. Even fucking Juno, who's obviously like your your villain that isn't mm-hmm. a creature. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you also know she's yeah. the leader. She's the guide. She's the one. You immediately know that Juno's, Juno's like the one that's like in charge. She's yeah. the one who's got, she's taken them to this cave. She picked it out. She's yeah. also the one who shoved the guidebook in the glove compartment because she has a secret mission. Um, there is one thing in this section we just talked about when they're going through the woods and Juno says, um, or no, on the drive, when they're driving there in the car that Juno's in, she says, relax, I've never been lost in my life. <laughs> yes. That was in the car heading to the cabin. I thought yeah. that was a good little, There's... and I didn't think about it the first time I watched it, but when I watched it again a couple of days ago, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's good. It's tropey, <laughs> but it, but it's 
but it's good. It just, mm-hmm. there's, again, we feel like I'm going to say this over and over again, and I'll edit a bunch of these out and I'm gonna <laughs> say it 40 times, but there's just something right about the way all that is handled in this. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like hokey. Cheesy. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just right. It's so, it's effect. It's effective and well done. And we will say that a lot. It's yeah. so, it, what a, what a gem, you guys. What a, effective what a out of freaking 10. gem. All right, and that's been so, what scares us. <laughs> <laughs> See you next month. <laughs> Before we leave this set of scenes, uh, I want to talk about whether Sarah is addicted to drugs or not because yeah. that yes. came up in a, something online that I watched. Oh, and same. So there's a case for it, I guess. But and, and there's even the one line one of the women says, well, I'm just chasing the next high. You'd know about that, too. Right, Sarah? Yeah. And Sarah says, what? And then there's that pro- very prominently placed pill bottle mm-hmm. when she's asleep and having a nightmare. And then she gets up in the morning and she has some of the pills. Huh. Mm-hmm. I miss so, that. That was when she was in the cabin. She had the pills by her bedside. And I think she was having, she had a nightmare dream in that part too. Right. Mm. And so we could, you know, say that a lot of this is, you know, drug addiction or pills or hallucination or whatever. And we know that she does have these very vivid nightmares Mm -hmm. and maybe hallucinate. But I felt like that was putting too much emphasis on this plot point, and I kind of disregarded that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It feels yeah. like trying to explain something that doesn't need to be explained. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's almost like they, you know, whatever her pill is maybe helps her sleep, and there could be a side effect that it makes her hallucinate or something. But mm-hmm. but you don't need right. that. Yeah. It's, exactly. It's, it's uh, yeah. I mean, she watched her family die one year ago, which is basically like five minutes ago. She watched her family die she's in grief the pills could have been for like for me i'm like oh she's taking medication for it could have been a number of things that were like ptsd syndrome or yeah. things she was going through after that uh, horrific yeah. event could have been anything they didn't mm-hmm. just die she was in the no. fucking yeah she watched her family <laughs> well, like, got skewered. impaled yeah, <laughs> yeah. so By copper pipes yeah That's and i fine. i do think they mentioned that a couple of the like behind the scenes or but it's not it's not a state it's not necessary for the yeah. movie like no one really it's referenced here and there, but it's not discussed. It's not like a, I mean, her having these visions, dreams, nightmares, hallucinations, whatever you want to call them, yeah. like those are happening. And again, you're going to think she's having those because of like the situation she's in. She's still suffering. Right. You That's know? how I so. took it. Yeah. I also saw that video though, Christopher, mm-hmm. and I was like, what? Did I like miss something? But I missed a lot. I had to watch this a couple yeah. times. But honestly, it's, <laughs> it's not, imp- it's not important. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> for the film. One yeah. thing I didn't miss: the gigantic hole in the fucking ground. <clears throat> That's gonna be a fuck no for me. I'm not descending not into there. hell. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Yeah, no. I don't even yeah. understand how they like clipped their stuff on the edge of it to. I don't uh, know. How it, are those carabiners like? You know, like the teeth ones yes. that they go up into all of them. I don't know. There's like a rope and a carabiner, and they're like, hey, let's do it. I, I, I'm sure those are all like this state-of-the-art the equipment. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. yeah. I don't trust any of that Can shit. I get a no, no? <laughs> no reason to go down there. No, we're not going down there. <laughs> they make a bunch of weird decisions right here. Like, oh, yeah, nasty dead deer. Photo op. Let's get a <laughs> let's selfie. Let's get all close to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Touch it, it with, with a, a stick. stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Stick bloodhound. It has weird bites <laughs> out of it and shit. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So again, a brief. It's a brief section, but it kind of throws in so many things. And finally, we're gonna we're gonna go down that giant hole in the ground. Juno's was like, "This is it." So they finished preparing, hooking up their things, items on their bodies in order to go down the giant hole. Um, Holly has a camcorder, and she films a few things. And once they're down there, one of them spies a blood red handprint on the side of one of the cave walls. Um, after a while, they stop to eat, just have some snacks, you know. <laughs> um, Juno asks if Sarah is okay and apologizes to Sarah that she didn't stick around after the accident. Bitch. Sarah then heads off on her own, and she goes to find the next passage. Then we see our first narrow crevice. Here we go, guys. Claustrophobia is coming our way. Mm. Um, we see our first narrow crevice that they begin to crawl through one at a time. Um, some of the girls go through and make it. All good. And then Sarah goes... And you can tell she's struggling and she is stuck. She can't breathe or move. 
this is when I wanted to fast forward it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Sarah can't breathe or move. She's stuck. Another girl comes back. I think it's the other blonde. I forget her name at the moment. Uh, she f- comes and helps her. They start moving, and then once they get past that point, a giant rock falls behind them, blocking the path behind them, which so they can't go back to get out that way. Um, so then we cut to Sarah having a vision, hallucination, what have you, of her daughter's birthday cake again. And she wakes up, and everyone is together, and they are trying to figure out their next move. And this is when we learn that Juno did not bring the guidebook. Mm-hmm. And that Juno has taken them to a completely different cave than the one they thought they were in. She wanted to explore a new cave system, and she wanted them all to discover it together. And she says that no one has ever been down there before. Of course, panic ensues. They argue about Sarah's state of mind. Juno says, we all lost something in that crash. They decide to move forward throughout the cave. Next, they get to a point where they have do carabiner Etc. Etc. Words. Words. <laughs> on a, they carry Peter on a line across the top of an area that with a giant drop below. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I'm not a caver. It's fine. And in order to get, in order to get to the <laughs> other side, You're not. Becca discovers. Uh, I was before I watched this movie. <laughs> Becca discovers an old caving hook inside the rock system. Uh, Sarah and Juno have words. So and. One of them says that it's not about them. It's about all of them claiming the cave together. Juno, uh, they all make it across. Juno goes last. Juno falls while crossing, but not all the way. She's finally able to get to the other side. And now they have this old clip that, and someone says it's over 100 years old. And they wonder who else was down there. And they decide that if whoever it was actually made it out, that they would have named the cave. So that's not a good sign. So the ladies keep moving. They discover some cave paintings on a wall. We see there's two. They discover in the cave or in the drawing that there's two entrances to the cave, meaning there's a way out. Mm -hmm. So at this scene, the viewers see a figure drool and make a weird sound. The ladies keep crawling on and Holly goes ahead and falls down a crevice and busts her leg. (laughs) And and they go down to help her. Uh, So for the first time, for a third time now, Sarah hears a weird giggling noise and she heads off to find it. Sarah sees and hears something and we get our first look at a crawler. Um, and so that basically takes us to like the first through the first half of the movie. This is the scariest part to me. Fuck yeah. This section is, I'm telling you, when they she got stuck in that tiny crevice, I was on my couch. It was black. I was like, I wanted to fast forward. I wanted to fast forward it. I'm like, I'm just going to yeah. fast forward this part real quick. Because this is the first, they just got in the cave and already it's like the worst part. It's mm-hmm. t- Even thinking about it right now is stressing me out because it's it, the yeah. idea, what makes this probably the scariest thing that we've watched is that the idea of moving forward into a small enclosure and not being able to move back. Mm-hmm. Like you couldn't turn around. Mm-hmm. That's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Um, and then for it to seal... I, I, anyway, they also I, lost some equipment too. They had to leave ropes, a, yeah. bag, a rope bag behind. Oof. Man, when Sarah's stuck in there, uh, you just feel like you're having your own panic attack, yeah. listening to her breathing and panicking and yelling. Uh, that little joke did nothing to alleviate my panic attack. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, Becca. What? Jeez. Yeah. The other, about a lemon. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. What the fuck? What? Anyway, the other thing that I remember... Tickle it, citrus. Yeah. T- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fuck does that... Anyway. Um, I Something that that I forgot about... The first time I saw this in theaters, I didn't know anything about creatures. I thought that the horror of this was just going to be the caving part. Yeah. So to me, the creatures, like the crawlers being shown, was a like sweet bonus. Um <laughs> And our and our the way that they're kind of like slowly introduced to us, it just mm-hmm. rules. Like, uh, Christopher, I have to ask: Was the thing where you were going to barf when they when oh, she God, pointed yeah. the flashlight down at her leg? Oh was, no, no. What was no, it? When she it broke was her the leg? scene. It's when Sarah's stuck. Oh. oh well, that would make me barf too. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> that just, was the worst part for oh, me. Oh my God. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. But yeah. that bone shooting out though. Woo wee. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that looks. Still looks good. Yep. Um, but also, like, you know, so she falls, and, like, you're assuming that she got hurt in some way, and she's like, oh, I think I hurt my leg, and then shines <laughs> down, and, and it yeah, is... Yeah, you did. <laughs> gruesome. I feel, like I, could, I feel like I could smell that scene. Ooh. Like, it just is, like, ugh. And all the nasty water falling on it, too. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, okay, well, we got to set this fucking thing. Oh. Ugh. In the, like, tiny... 
area that we're in now. This because they other- all jump down, go down there to help her. Mm. In the, I know Matt, you said you did not watch the. There's a really cool like 40 minute behind the scenes, and yeah. they talk about making the prosthetic and making the, how they made the blood gush out, which was really cool with the bone. Bravo. You would love it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I have it queued up. I'll watch it. I meant to watch it before this, but yeah. it's just and this also introduces us to we're already like okay things are going to be very dark in this movie, and then it's things get very wet and very moist, and you know there's going to be some blood and guts. So yeah. it just you get into that zone and you stay there. You know what else is cool about this movie that just, I don't know why I just thought of this, hardly any CGI. Yeah. Like, I think that's maybe part of the thing is like it, it feels like a movie of old. There's mm-hmm. a little bit with some of the caves to make the the, sure. the, the wide shots look even bigger yeah. since they were filmed on sets. Right. But yeah, it's just in these. But like all the, all the gore stuff is practical. Like mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. crawlers themselves are makeup like that. Yeah. Come on, guys. Stop with special effects horror movies. <laughs> yeah. They also made all the sets, like, individual pieces, and then moved yeah. them around for different scenes. And they show it in that um, beneath the scenes. Beneath, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's really cool. I I don't know how they did that. Yeah. Well, and they, and they, so they found a way to make a movie that could have looked very samey the mm-hmm. whole time. Mm-hmm. Look pretty different, and it was very disorienting. I know that was inevitably yeah. the point, but like I felt like I was, like we alluded to earlier after watching the stuff about Nutty Putty Cave, and also reading The Outsider and stuff like that. Like I, like caves are scary; they're yeah. scary as fuck mm-hmm. to me. And this one is no exception. This one is everything that I'm afraid of with caves. Where mm-hmm. it's like, I have no idea where this goes. Um, yeah, you really do feel like you're lost with them because you don't see repetition of spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and even in some of the the rock structures they built that they were reusing, they would reposition them. Like they would move like horizontal to vertical or just yeah. make them different colors and different shapes, which is so neat. And it's super creative because they, they could get away with – because it's dark, they can mm-hmm. get away with not having to do a ton. Yeah, and the lighting, mm-hmm. they used the really, some really cool lighting to change yeah. it up as well. Um, if they had more money, this movie would have been worse. <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> in you're so right. many ways, I think it would have been right. longer. You would have had CGI. You would have had some yeah. really trashy effects going on. You also probably would have had like a big yeah. name person in it, it that might have stupid. taken away from it. Would, yeah. These mm-hmm. these actresses all felt real. Like yeah. it felt, they felt like they probably really did do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, generally, I hate horror movies that are shot at night or are really dark, but this was mm-hmm. great. I, I felt like you could see what you wanted to see. You were straining to see into the dark, uh-huh. but not in a in a frustrating way, you know, so that was great. Yeah. And I never thought I was claustrophobic, really, until seeing this movie. And at some point in the last, I don't know, 10 or 20 years, do you remember the miners? that were stuck underground in, mm-hmm. in South America. And yes. every single day on the radio, they would give an update. And it's like, oh my God, those fucking miners mm-hmm. yeah. are still, still stuck there. down there. Like being alive and trapped in a small space just oh my sounds God. Uh-huh, awful. Yeah. Like <laughs> day to day, I feel like I'm not claustrophobic, like elevators and small spaces. I feel like I... I like to sit in the back of a room. I like to be close to a door. I like to face the wide open space of a room. But I don't have like this debilitating thing where I'm afraid of a closed space. For me, it comes more into play when I see it happening on film. It's a really, really, really freaky thing. Like there's a scene in like Kill Bill where she's like trapped like in a box oh, or something. And she has to like. Buried alive. She has. Yeah. She's, and she has to like bust her way out. Ooh, yeah. ooh, put somebody on a screen in a box or in a small space. That's when I start to have my, put me in an elevator or something else. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Was mm-hmm. that the, what year did that come out? Because I remember that in theaters too was another Kill really Bill. upsetting scene. 2001, maybe? Is that right? Late, late 90s at the or late 90s. I, but I remember that that was part but two. But that scene really, yeah. I hated that scene. Well, it was a good scene, but anyways, that that's what I think about when I think of like, 2004, so it was oh. around this time. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's later than I thought. There's a lot of movies. Even like I was rewatching Stranger Things recently, and when the kids are crawling through the ducks <laughs> uh, around the mall, that's I don't like that. I'm mm-hmm. like I'm like Erica, Dustin, get out of there. It's very <laughs> tiny. You're gonna get smushed and not gonna have enough air to breathe. You don't know for sure that you can get through that. Yeah, you don't. You don't know where it's going to go, mm-hmm. even though like they had like the map or whatever, but. It's yeah. still a small, tiny space. It's a small, tiny space. Yeah. That fits your body. 
don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was claustrophobic until I learned about the naughty putty thing, and now I am so scared. <laughs> that and that. So after watching that thing about Nutty Putty Cave, I then my algorithm started to show me a lot of videos of people <laughs> that do that for fun, like yeah. like adventure seekers. <gasps> And it like watching it really happen, people going through like like long cave systems that have these like seemingly like inches thick like spaces to get through that are through water. Yeah. Fuck everything about that. Yes. Like you could get stuck. I don't understand the appeal either. Like it's gotta be an adrenaline thing. It's gotta be like similar to people that love intense roller coasters and stuff. Or like falling Maybe. out of airplanes, like skydiving. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's got. I'm sure it's something like that. But you, you can like get race, stuck. like racing, yes. like there's so yeah. many. Like it's like an adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I've been to Chuck E. Cheese and uh, crawled <laughs> through those tubes. It's and scary. It's the it's the worst part of Chuck E. Cheese yeah. because there's no balls. There's no yeah. like interest. You're just also, that's germs. Balls. It smells like kid mouth. And yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's nasty. It's, it's don't gross. don't lick the walls. <laughs> Oh, that's right. somebody already did. <laughs> now I remember. I used to go to Java Jungle out on Jackson. Oh, I've been there. Not oh, in it, but right. I got a coffee and watched the kids I was babysitting. Yeah. <laughs> Java Jungle? It yeah, doesn't it was exist out anymore. On, yeah. And uh, my Where daughter. Jackson was that? I'm sorry. I, I, it, it, there used to be a uh, glow-in-the-dark putt-putt place out there, too. Man, Jackson <laughs> lost everything cool. What the hell? Sorry, I like yeah. like Jackson. Wait, Jackson, Road. Michigan. Jackson Road. Yeah, well, I in grew, Ann Arbor. Sorry, I grew yeah. up around that. I spent a lot of. T How did I not know about this shit? <laughs> did you I, have any I kids Dexter. in your? I remember life Java, in Jungle. <laughs> Java Jungle. Java Jungle. Ten. Yeah, <laughs> it existed when I lived here, but it it doesn't have that. I didn't know about this putt putt thing. Huh. There's no movie theaters and bowling alley. Jackson's dead now. So sad. I know it is. It sucks. Yeah, <laughs> maybe there's an underground cave though that we don't know about. I don't want any part of this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's. In, I mean, this movie plays. I feel like there are some movies where there are scenes that are claustrophobic, like Die Hard. There's, and those aren't necessarily as scary. But this is, it's constant because they can't get out. And then once these creatures appear, not only are they trying to get out, now they are battling these creatures that they have no idea. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, the realization that they're lost, they're stuck, and they don't know where they are, and no one else knows where they are. And no one's going to come help them. I know. Yeah. Oh, my and God. They're and, alone. and they're not alone. And they're being hunted. They're being hunted. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we just met up with these creatures. Sarah heard something, and then we saw, she saw a crawler, and then we saw that close up of the crawler drooling. I have um, one quibble okay. before we leave this Please. scene. <laughs> So when they first descend into the cave and the bats come out for a little jump scare. Oh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> but I, why are bats flying out in the middle of the morning? <laughs> Sorry. They're that's, all vampires. Right. <laughs> They've got business. <laughs> right. It was kind of neat, but I think we could have done without that. I also, they're CGI, <laughs> right? And they look pretty... 2000s, probably, so. probably, <laughs> probably. They probably couldn't get a lot of yeah. bad actors for that. Come on, they're the, they're the bats that were in the Goonies that flew out of the, the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll on. Much more whimsical that way. Wait, can I tell you guys about Nutty Putty real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got it. I have no idea what the heck if this is, but they keep talking off. about it. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> it's, All of the sound will make me throw off. Oh man. Okay, 2009. So after this movie comes out. Too bad this man didn't watch this movie first. John Edward Jones? It's something like that, yeah. John Jones, who's like 28, and his brother and like 10 of their family members go spelunking in Nutty Putty Caves, which are in Utah, and they're like super old, and they have like a lot of like really tight passageways. Um, he's crawling around on his stomach in a part of it that is literally called the birth canal because it's so tight. But he takes a wrong turn and goes down like a tiny crevice that's like off of it and gets stuck upside down. Ugh. So his brother finds him. Head, head down? Head down. Head down. Vert vertical head down? Yes. And, and he's stuck. So his brother finds him and goes and gets help and it becomes this huge like <sighs> search and rescue mis mission. So they work on it for hours, but basically it sucks because like the people have to go down there to get him out and they have to get all this equipment down there. To essentially set up a system of pulleys. Yes. To try to like pull him by his feet up. 
out of the thing that he's stuck in. And it's super painful. So they have to work super, like the whole process is super slow. But like long story short, the pulley system fails and it collapses and the pulley like smacks one of the search and rescue guys in the face and like wounds him badly. And John, even though they had gotten him partially out, slips even deeper. Like he falls down and falls like, Oh, like, they just like shove him further him. in. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. And like after he falls, he's like unresponsive. So he's just like under there now. They sealed the cave. With yeah. He's just under there <sighs> because your yeah. body can't be upside down for, it, it was like 27 or 28 it hours. It was something like that. And he mm-hmm. was like, so he has a heart attack. Like yeah. he, has, yeah. he goes into cardiac arrest and Gosh. they had put a little two way radio down there and his wife is on the surface talking to him and trying to keep him calm because yeah. as he's panicking, he's creating a worse situation and getting more stuck. But yeah, so then <laughs> he's, they had like a um, medic guy go down there and take a pulse on his leg and they declared him dead. And then they realized, well, we can't get him out in one piece. So yep. they'd, talk about ways that they could get him out and then decide that it's not worth it. So they seal him in so they seal and him he's in. still in there. Still there. Yeah. Well, I guess that's, I mean, when you bury somebody, when they die, they're underground too, but he's in a little, he's a hundred feet down. He's in a little skinny <laughs> too. <Yeah. clears throat> oh, that's... And he had like young kids, like his wife was Ugh. pregnant. He was like yeah. he was 26, 20, uh, 26, I guess. Yeah. Something like that. It's a nightmare. Yeah. I, I missed that news story. Well, there's also footage from the rescue. So you can like, watch Oh yeah. There's, it there's like happen. the picture of when they were able to like get him out enough that they could see his face. And, and they were like, him. that was when they identified like in his eyes that they're like, Oh shit. He's been upside down so long that he's going into like organ failure. Yeah. yeah. He's got like bloodshot. And he, yeah. he was like, there's this picture, which we'll cut this part up. But like, that was the last time that they saw him alive because that, and it's like, he's, they're like, we almost got you out, but like, look at the size of the space that he's in there. It's fucked up. Anyway, it's, and that shit, yeah, that shit really happened. I don't think there's any crawlers down there, but. No. Anyway. I mean, that we know of. But that is the freakiest thing I've ever heard of. Mm-hmm. That kept me up for so long after I watched the YouTube documentary, because that's like some real, that, that is like one of the most terrifying things I can think of. Yep. So if you would have seen, if that news Real life news story would have happened like before this movie came out. Maybe skip the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you would have. Oh. Yeah. 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 Claustrophobia. It's no joke. Claustrophobia. And part of too, I think why this is, it's, it's scary. It's got monsters. There's jump scares in it. But part of what makes this scary is that, that visceral human response, that claustrophobia, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Oh man. I'm sad. I know. Isn't that terrible? It's tough. Yeah, it's, I'm just. I don't want to go in the cave. All right, you guys. We gotta keep crawling. <laughs> you don't have to. We gotta, <laughs> don't have to. We gotta keep crawling. We're only halfway through the movie. Wait, I have a couple more things about this section. Okay, there was a lot here. One, the rope burn hand, so Ooh, fucking nasty. Yeah. Ooh, that's oh, gnarly. Oh man, gross. That's so bad. It looks so deep. Yeah. She's like, I'll live. It's like, d- yeah. What? I would have been <laughs> screaming and. But I uh, anyway, I would have been furious by this point <laughs> to be. Yeah. In well, that. she's alive. She didn't fall down that yeah. the hole. I also love that Juno, um, like. Come, goes across that chasm the hard way to try and save all of the shit because they don't have that much. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like the one good thing she does. Yeah, in yeah. This movie, <laughs> she's, I don't know. she's I really like. She's Juno. badass. She has a lot of skills. Um, she makes bad decisions. I don't think she's a bad person. Mm-hmm. She's a BG. What is that? <laughs> That's what we call the dogs. A bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But if you say that, they'll both go, "Oh shit!" So yeah. we say BG. If it's just like, if it seems like she's being a BG. Should I should I pull the ripcord on this one? And call her a bad girl. <laughs> oh my goodness! I love that. Sorry, yeah. I forget that 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 my colloquialisms don't apply to everybody. <laughs> also, these are dogs, by the way. Not. I'm talking children. about dogs, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean Sarah. Or uh, you know what? There's plenty. No, Juno is Juno's a good character. Like you need a character like Juno in here. You need that that foil. You need someone who's sort of you mentioned villain. I wouldn't have called her a villain, but no. she's just kind of, you know. But she, she becomes a villain for our main character yeah. because she eventually finds out about the affair mm-hmm. in a really subtle little way. But no, she um, lies. Yeah. But if you have a group of six women, you've got a Juno. Mm-hmm. You just it's just natural to have the, but she also of characters. the reason I call her a villain <laughs> is it's all her because she fault. got them all in this fucking situation. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, like I would have, I don't know what I would. But she done was doing it for all of them. She situation. wanted them but to it discover was her it together. Hubris. That's exactly <laughs> it, and that's yeah. Play stupid games, yeah. win stupid prizes. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. but she does have amazing skills and she is looking out for the group in theory yeah, yeah. well she owes that to them at the very yeah. fucking least at this yes. point it's funny though because i do really like juno I don't like Holly that much. And so when she's going head first into the thing and everyone's like, no, stop, slow down. Mm-hmm. It's like, ugh. oh, yeah. Of course you break your fucking leg. Like, what are you doing? No reason to be in a hurry in this situation. No. Like to, to run, especially because they don't know where the fuck they are. Well, she's, I feel like she's younger. She's also like more daredevil even though they're yeah. all doing this scary thing. She's more just like, even when they enter the cave for the very first time and she just like goes down really fast and someone's like, no, there's a plan. We've got to come out in order one at a time. And she's just like, woo! camcorder yeah. and just you know so it's just her style which yeah. i appreciate that little exuberance that first camcorder footage that we see in the mm-hmm. green screen in the commentary they specifically mentioned that that's inspired by alien and john hurt like finding the eggs oh very it's so cool. cool yeah of course very cool right. there is a lot of alien in this movie yes i think that there's more aliens in this movie, actually, oh. because that was the movie that I thought was uh, was a big inspiration, even though the director clearly says it was Alien. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. here's why. The first half of Aliens, like the first half of The Descent, is, you know, trouble. You get introduced to the creature or whatever. And then the second half is kind of, oh, maybe they're not quite as tough as we thought. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to kill them. And so I thought that kind of turning point in the, in the direness and the, the, the trouble with the monsters was, was really similar, you know, because the first time you see the, the, the crawler, you know, it's terrifying, it's deadly, it kills someone right away. And you think, oh my God, there's no way to survive this. Just Mm -hmm. like in aliens. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then the rest of the movie is kind of, you know, fighting back against this terrible foe in Aliens right. and in The Descent. There's also just clearly a lot of those crawlers in there. It's not exactly, we're not sure of the precise number or anything, but it's right. not like Alien where there's one. And yeah. I mean, that one mm-hmm. is bad enough, but... Um, That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Aliens, by the way, is my favorite movie of all time. Yeah? So, oh, yeah, even more so than Alien. I know that that's a rare opinion but I, aliens <laughs> mm-hmm. is a movie that i watch a couple of times a year every year i love huh. it yeah. so when you compare it to aliens i i don't know if you saw me smiling i almost picked that for this podcast <laughs> you picked alien <laughs> aliens is the one i remember because watching it like as a kid that was like the it rocks precious. it's a fucking perfect movie i yeah. just it's oh it's so good well there the scene where we first see the it's a, when we I don't know if this is the, I think, I don't know if Sarah saw its body from far away or if we see the head first, but there's a shot where it's like its head is most of the screen and it's like drooling down. That's an alien to me. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's totally. It. Yeah. Oh, right. Gross. That shot. That shot. stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in that, it nasty. Yeah. Uh, unrelated, but Matt, I would have laughed so hard if your first four picks were just the four alien. <laughs> four aliens. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> there's only two, in my opinion. But. <laughs> Forget about that. There could be a, there's a case to be made for the third one, but. Is that the basketball one? <laughs> Alien Resurrection. I, uh, motherfucker, yeah. that guy. Anyway, that. I Sequels hate. are hard. Yeah. Sequels can be real but, hard. <laughs> you gotta they, try. They can, but you gotta try <laughs> and you gotta, anyway, the Alien Resurrection is such a bad movie and <laughs> I hate Joss Whedon and he's like, I place a lot of the blame at his feet. <laughs> And also, but also 20th Century Fox, sorry, they, <laughs> Alien 3 was David Fincher's first movie, and it wasn't good oh. because they fucked with them the whole time. Anyway, sorry, that dude went on to make Seven after that, but, <laughs> and and he, we could have had an Alien movie that looked like Seven. Instead, we had the what we got. But anyway, I, I love those movies. <laughs> I love talking about those movies. I love... Um the shot where the creatures are like circling the girls and it's like a pan around the room and around them. Cool. Mm-hmm. Really good shots here. This is where it all just kind of is like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is cool. Can we go to the next part now, you guys? Yes. Sure. All right. We are officially, it's happening now. We are getting beyond. We've already seen our crawler for the very first time. We're getting very excited. We're just over halfway through the movie. And Sarah... Sarah seeing the crawler. She Juno tries to tell her that it's nothing. Sarah tries to convince the others that she saw a man. No one believes her. They move on, 
And after a while, they enter a space full of bones, which they're able to see through Holly's camcorder. This is the green that we referenced a second ago. Through Holly's camcorder, really cool visuals. A crawler bursts out of the water here. They all scream. Sarah says that she told them she saw someone. They hear the creature screaming. We see some close-ups of it. And finally, we see close-ups of it finally. And it attacks Holly, biting her neck. Juno fights the crawler. I called it the Voldemort-looking thing, and kills it. She hears a noise, turns around, and accidentally stabs Beth. Yeah. Beth yanks off Juno's necklace as she lays dying. Juno leaves her there. Sarah has another hallucination or vision of her daughter. Um, so the women are separated, and they're all desperately trying to get out. Becca is using the camcorder as a light. She sees a body fall. The crawlers eat it. Becca and Sam are together, and they are staying quiet so the crawlers don't hear them. We get a close-up of the crawler's face. Oh, that's so good. And then the the two of them realize that the crawlers can't see, that they're blind. So while they're hiding, Sarah and Juno are off, each on their own. Sarah finds a dead holly, takes some stuff off her body to make a torch with a fire so she can see. Becca is attacked by a crawler. Juno arrives and kills it, saving her. Juno tells them that Holly and Beth are both dead. And then we know that Sarah is still out there on her own, but that Beth and Holly are dead. So the three women discuss how the crawlers are blind with good hearing, and they say that they must crawl to the surface to hunt at some point, meaning there must be a way to get out. Juno says that she found a way out due to her previous caver's markings on the walls. We go back to Sarah off on her own, and she finds a very undead Beth. She looks half dead, um, so more than half dead. So she, Beth says that Juno did this and that she left her to die and to not trust her. She hands Sarah the necklace that Juno always wore, and she finds out that Paul gave it to Juno, meaning that they were having an affair. Beth begs Sarah to put her out of her misery, and she does. And in the chaos, stabs her friend in the neck accidentally. Yeah. I did not. Holy that's shit. awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a like she turns around accidentally. Whoops. Well, Beth's a big dumbass because why would you like yeah. sneak up behind <laughs> somebody who's <laughs> who's swinging around whatever that thing's called? Pickaxe. I, pickaxe. Yeah. So yeah. here's wow. another here's another way that I think this movie is similar to Aliens. <laughs> I love it. Let's hear it. <laughs> because at some point after the crawlers attack and all the women disperse, and you can hear them in various rooms screaming and running, and uh, there's just chaos everywhere. Isn't that like in Aliens where everything is, the plan totally. is shit. It's when and they now the it's fans. just a free-for-all yeah. and people are screaming and firing and just When they send around. everybody into the hive and Ripley and, and uh, Gorman and Newt are all still back in the car. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's just chaos. Right. It's all sound that's telling you the story mm -hmm, at that mm -hmm. point. Right. And which I, is clever. Yeah, and I felt the same thing in this. It's like, okay, now everything is totally fucked. Yeah. Because people are just running around in the dark, all separated. Nobody knows where anything and is. And they don't anymore. know where they ran. I yeah. Know. That, oh that's God. the thing that's the most it's just crazy. Layer on layer of horror. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a great idea to split up when you're surrounded mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. yeah. bad guys. By something that knows where it is. <laughs> yeah. But I don't feel like it was intentional. I feel like they were just trying to basically run. And if you're in a cave, with you don't know where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. You just end up, oh, God, I'm by myself now. Yeah. You know, no one said, hey, I'm going to go up by myself. Well, Sarah, Sarah's going through her own mental anguish. Yeah. So she kind of has her own path. Yeah. I love... Um, this is kind of weird to say, I guess. I love that the crawlers rip out Holly's throat, and then the creature and Juno play tug of war over her body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I laugh so hard at that. It's like, no, yeah. it's mine. No, it's, it's mine. It's so it's horrific, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's so horrific that it's almost funny. Yeah. You know, like that would be such a nightmare situation to be in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Really good effects, though, on all of the. We've had a lot of brutality in this little area, and they're gruesome. Really good gore, and I think too that the the way it's shot and the lighting, the color, the saturation, it lends itself to like, it has that reddish hue. So you, you, can, can, kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. you can feel that. Because if that was like daylight and you were seeing that gore effects, it might not have looked as good. But in the darkness, yeah. the, the gore and the... They're able to put a lot of light behind it mm -hmm. so that when the red does splash out, it almost looks, it's like so red, it's almost neon. Like yeah. it looks, but it's not gross. in like a fakey way. It just, it looks like it's striking. Yeah, all the lighting is so good. Like, I love the flares are red, or I think some mm -hmm. of the flares are yellow. The little glow sticks are green. The green, yeah. yeah. Like, 
and the difference between all of them. Is just really and then they cool. have a lighter at some point, and then the torch adds more color. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that was one thing when they were filming. It's like, oh, how do we how do we light this? What is what is their source of light, and how yeah. do we film that? Yeah. yeah. Which is smart because it's more mm-hmm. realistic. Although I do think it'd be a lot darker in there in yeah. real life. It's true. Um, also, I'm not a Juno apologist by any means, but she looks so fierce and crazy here. I love it. Yeah. I am she's a got big some Sarah Juno Connor fan. going on. <laughs> she, she's she's, ba- she's badass. <laughs> She's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's trying to defend herself and her friends, and then she accidentally kills one of them. Oops. But then she freaking yeah. lies about it later. Yeah. That's oh. why she's a villain. Yeah. Yeah, but like, okay, if you accidentally she's killed human. your friend and you're still fighting all these bad guys, would you be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I like totally accidentally murdered our friend, but don't worry about that now because I'm going to get you. You know what I mean? Yes, like, you say that. This is not the time. <laughs> Get out first, and then you can. By be like, the way, I stabbed okay. our friend in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> and the little pointy part was sticking. Sticking through. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. that's good. Yeah, it just sets up more tension coming up because Sarah's still off on her own. Um, the dog heads that we see when we're looking at all the bones and crap on the ground mm. are from Dog Soldiers, which was his movie before this, which mm-hmm. was That's all male cool. and I think not that good. All the bones were manufactured. They did not do a poltergeist. <sighs> this guy hasn't made another good movie as far as I can tell. No, he did make two of the good Game of Thrones episodes. Oh, oh. that's interesting. I think he did the the Battle of Blackwater that's cool. That's cool. I didn't read but anything else about what the uh, the director. I forgot to do that. He also made the Hellboy movie. So, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. No, but Neil Marshall, like, I think he was. I think because of this movie, he was like a hot name for a while, but he just never really followed it up with anything good. Like he did the Hellboy remake in 2019. Yeah, but like, I'm not seeing a lot of other big credits beyond this. Um, the Lost in Space TV series. You did a couple episodes of that. Oh. I haven't seen that episode of Hannibal. And then what are the episodes of Game of Thrones? Yeah, he did season two, episode nine, Blackwater. That's cool. In season four, episode nine, The Watchers on the Wall, which is another Ooh, one of the like big. Yeah, that's a big that's one. That's cool. All right, that's cool. That All is right. cool. Sorry, Neil Marshall. But he still stayed <laughs> in. Like he stayed in because it looks like. Um, I think he produced the sequel. Of this too, yeah. which I hear is a piece of shit. It is. I'll tell you about it in a second. <laughs> I can't wait because I don't want to watch it. You, like I, you don't need it. You don't need a sequel to this. Yeah. At all. Well, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get okay, there. Okay. It's, yeah. <laughs> Once you hear what the plot is, you'll be like, "Wow, we really didn't need." That. I read the plot today, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, thanks." <laughs> well, I saw that's on Max, and I was, I was no. tempted's not the word. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Um. Oh, one line that we missed that I love is when Sarah is stuck and Beth is like the worst thing that's already happened to you. Like that can happen to you already happened mm-hmm. to you. I find that comforting in a way. That was a, that was like, a really yeah. good line. You might be crushed to death in a second here. She wasn't but. right. <laughs> she wasn't right at all. Yeah. Well, she was trying to calm her friend down like she was about to have a panic yeah. attack. Yeah. <clears throat> well, know? and actually the true worst thing happened to her a year prior yeah <laughs> yeah well that's what yeah 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 i was thinking about that too that if i was in that situation and someone said the worst thing that's already happened to you has happened to you and i, I thought well okay i can get through this little tunnel yeah mm-hmm. yeah I think even I though I, I think i can even I though i can't can. even move my arms or my legs <laughs> oh, and good. there's nothing to breathe and the walls are collapsing further <laughs> well, i can do it yeah. <laughs> well, until I think, was it becca who was there trying to calm her like Four other women already did it, and yeah. Becca did it right before her, and so she's there. But she's just stuck. She's in her mind. She's in that she can't move. I just realized that there's another tie. There's another s- loose connection to aliens with Hell this yeah. movie. <laughs> there's a there's the famous claustrophobic scene in Aliens where Bishop has to crawl through that fucking of tunnel course. to get over to where the wow. dropship is. Yes, Bishop should go. Yeah, because he's a fucking robot. <laughs> yes, droid. Um. Yeah, sorry. That's that, and that that made me feel really uncomfortable when I was a kid too, because yeah. he's crawling with his shoulders. Yes, he's shimmying he, his shoulders he have a, like a, a candle or a flash. He's just pushing it along like with his chest. Yeah, Jesus, man. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> everybody should watch Aliens. 
if you haven't already. <laughs> and Stop the, listening to this. And <laughs> go watch Aliens. We have a lot of homework listeners. Yeah. Christopher, what were you saying? And The Descent. Uh, watch The Descent, right, right. too. <laughs> oh, if you haven't watched it yet, we've already told you so many things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have real uh, mixed feelings about Beth. Not a Beth fan. Which one is Beth? Beth was She's the one the she was the closest original with. third. She's the Juno, teacher. Sarah, and Beth. She has like the short dark hair kind of in a bob. She's the one who's like, the worst thing has already happened to you. Yeah. And then no, she that gets wasn't the, Beth. That was Becca. No, it's oh. not. I don't think. Becca, th- there's a, the blonde woman. She's not blonde. The one who saved her was Becca? I thought it was Beth. It wasn't because Beth was the one with the short bob who met her in the hospital and who was driving her yes. there and drops her off. The person who was saying that was the blonde one who is kind of like, I call her the mom. Right. And her name is. It was not Beth. Because that stood out to me. Mm-hmm. It stood out to me. Beth got the other blonde. Because it wasn't the one that she was closest with. Because I envisioned that Beth and Sarah were the closest. Huh. I th- I'm bamboozled. I mean, I could be completely misremembering everything, but I feel like... Oh, but anyway, um, my point is, Beth gives her the necklace thing that clearly shows that Beth has known about the affair the whole Mm -hmm. time. I think they all have. I didn't even put that together. I think they all have. So, like... One, I don't understand why they are all getting together without resolving this. But two, why even bring up the affair while you're dying? Like, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, you got a thing through your neck. Yeah. Why would you spend your last moments on Earth being like, by the way, Juno fucked your dead husband? Well, because, well... It gives uh, it gives us some stakes. It gives she probably didn't plan some, it. Yeah. Like, that wasn't her, like, dying plan. But since Sarah was standing there with the necklace, it's Juno's. Yeah. And then she just get, explained it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was weird. Because a lot of... There were a couple other moments where they mentioned... Where it made it seem like... Oh, it's Juno. Juno says, when so Juno argues with the other girls and she says, we all lost something in that crash. Mm-hmm. So it, to me, it just sounded like that the rest of the girls are all new. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe Holly, Holly, I don't know, Holly's a new person, but it just sounded like they knew what was going on. I think Holly comes with Juno because they're like yeah. action buddies. I feel like, right. but I feel like yeah, that can th- be th- true, th- like right. within like a, a group of female friendships. I feel like there's. Sometimes there are things you hide from or don't tell a partner about, like, their, or your friend about their partner yeah. or something. Yeah, It just gives an added layer of depth and complexity to these characters that otherwise are just screaming. Yeah. You know? It, it's, it's like, I, yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah. Damn it. That, and again, that's what that. makes, that's what pushes her, that's what, <laughs> that's what makes the dumb viewer like me be like, she's a villain. <laughs> you know? That's like, a dumb viewer comment. Well. Yeah. It, but that's the voice that I am for this podcast. I'm the dumb viewer. No. No, I, mean, that the, I want to be. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't take that away from you, but. <laughs> Let me be dumb. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that like stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> so you don't like Sorry. Beth because she ratted her out. And also I take back what I said earlier. Allison was correct. It is Beth that was talking to her in the when she was stuck. It was not Becca. Well, it just adds like a level of complexity to their relationships, which I do like, but it like <laughs> The second time I watched this for this, I was like, oh, this isn't even about claustrophobia or creatures. It's about secrets and how secrets kill. <laughs> oh because my and they Juno, hide in caves. Juno is hiding that she is like, uh, I think Juno is like in love with the husband. I don't think they're just banging it out on the side. Like, because that's what gives <laughs> that um, we all lost something that day. Like, I think she really genuinely cared about the husband and i think he loved her too because he she has a necklace from him this yeah. is love each day yeah and so it wasn't just a fling i think they were in love with each other maybe he sure. deserved to die <laughs> <laughs> well i mean he's a man so yeah um bad dude but then like if beth is keeping that secret for juno it just sort of complicates everyone's relationship with each other mm-hmm. which i think is interesting and it makes it really good as a viewer to know these things and to feel that tension and among guess- among the women I guess when you think about something we, when you said earlier is that, yeah, there are dynamics like this with friend groups where it's just like, well, you, we know this about this person and we're not supposed to or whatever. And like, 
So it, I don't know this 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 lends to some of the mm-hmm. strange realism of this very yeah. fantastical movie. And it's not always like a malicious thing where like oh yeah. my friend's husband is cheating on her <laughs> I, I'm going to tell her or not tell her. There's can be more subtle yeah. small things that have happened, but there's some things that but you this just, one is I mean that's this, realistic. Yeah, it's plus they're trapped underground and they're never going to get out, and this is the last thing yeah. she says before she's dying. Yeah, you sold um, me. I think Beth did know that there was know. an affair. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, that had not occurred to me. Yep. What? Is it, everyone's looking at me and I don't know No, I'm why. looking at you. I'm looking at you for, <laughs> as a female to a female. I'm like, of course that's what, I mean, obviously. Are you? Huh. I'm dumb. Don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm simple. You're simple. <laughs> We're just oh, the simple side simple. of the table. Simple yeah. boy. <laughs> Amanda and I have a very complex relationship. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I guess I just thought it was chance that she grabbed the necklace and ended up hanging onto it, but that doesn't really make sense in the way it was filmed. I think it just it came off more... accidentally, and she just ended up still having it there. Yeah, but now that I think about it, I think it was much more purposeful. You think Beth ripped the necklace off Juno as she was being murdered by her? Kind of. Or is that the wrong answer? Well, now I gotta I watch it. I, don't know. I know. I'm like, because I don't quite remember. <laughs> I, I watched that scene so many times. Huh. I didn't, over I, didn't and over. I didn't pick up on that. I still hmm. think that she was struggling and then the necklace came off accidentally and she just she's lying there at bloody guts mostly Ooh. dead and she just happens to have the necklace in her hand cuz she's like paralyzed and then when Sarah comes along and finds her she has the she picks up the she drops the necklace is dropped and she picks it up and she's like oh shit this is Juno's necklace and then that's when Beth tells her How is she able to talk? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, yeah. There, there should be just placed? air coming. This happened yeah. in The Prowler, too, which is another very good movie. <laughs> I think at one point it looked like she was trying to cover the hole. Oh, oh that would make sense. Th- that's what I thought the first time that she spoke. I guess I should watch that again, but man, if they really wanted to sell that, if she was like gurgling or something, yeah. that, that would have, yeah. But she talk, kind of talks a lot. Because then she, later she's begging, I know, begging Sarah to kill her. Yeah, mm-hmm. like don't, like don't let me stay here like this. Yeah. No shit. As she's Oof. like hanging out with all the other dead bodies. <laughs> I mean, a crawler yeah. were to come along and finish her off in five minutes anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, w- I don't know if I would. I'd if I knowing that there were creatures out there, I wouldn't tell my friend to kill me. I would just wait because I wouldn't want my friend to have that on their conscience of like killing another person. Even though Sarah's going to kill a bunch of people pretty soon. Well. Um, also, though, like, again, I've never been in this situation myself, so I don't really know what I would do. I have. But, like, if we're trying to fight a horde of creatures, I don't want my friend to expend energy on my behalf. I want them to leave and, like, yeah. possibly get out. Like, don't worry about me. Just leave. Usually movies are just like, leave, go. And then they you go and the person's going to lay there dying. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess that, I guess this might be the one part I don't like because I don't think that Sarah should kill Beth right now. I think Sarah should run and leave Beth alone. The other thing that drove me insane about all of this end is why are they just killing? Are you guys going to eat all these people? Like, use the bodies. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the creatures, you're mad at the creatures for yeah. not eating them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they left that deer outside. They totally got to let, okay. they they let them cool off. Like, come on. There's a like, waiting what do you period. Mean use them. But I, but I, I, I see. Like, if I you're going to eat them, eat yeah. them. But don't just kill. Like, you know what I mean? You could some be, of them, one of them's really chowing down on their, some point. their guts at one point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It reminded me of, like, the Demogorgon in the Stranger Things. Like, mm-hmm. ooh. Yeah. Mowing that one person later. <laughs> um, <sighs> okay, so we're gonna move on to the next scene here. So Beth, Beth has the, this is the end part. This is our whole end section coming up here. So um, Beth begs Sarah to kill her, and she does. So we a crawler appears, and then Sarah kills it. Sarah runs and ends up in a pool of awesome muck. Ooh. A crawler jumps in and joins her. Sarah kills it with an antler she finds on the side, and then she kills another crawler. It's all boom, boom, boom right now, you guys. Afterwards, she screams and her friends hear her. Sam tries to escape by going back over the large hole that they all had to cross earlier. Becca and Juno find her and see a crawler kill her, and then it kills Becca. So at this point, Juno and Sarah are the only two left, and Sarah is still off on her own. Um, after seeing Becca die, Juno escapes by jumping in water, and she's went under there by her crawler, and she stabs it. Cool scene. Juno <laughs> crawls out with the help of Sarah. Sarah looks wild. I love this part. Mm-hmm. She looks wild, and Juno asks, what happened to you? Sarah asks about the fate of Becca and Beth. Juno lies and says she saw Beth die. 
The two then head off with a flare and a torch to find a way out. They see a light above and under is a pack of crawlers. Another cool scene of them standing there. And the two women are attacked by them. They all fight. The crawlers die. Sarah shows Gino the necklace. The truth now is out there. And Sarah stabs Gino in the leg and leaves. Crawlers show up and attack Gino. Sarah falls and ends up back in the bone room. <laughs> and she sees sunlight overhead. And she crawls up this giant mountain of skulls and bones. She crawls up and heads out of the cave, screaming... She runs towards the truck and she drives off. She pulls over. She sits. She's screaming, crying. She pukes. And then she looks over and sees Juno sitting next to her in the car. She screams. Cut to black. The movie's over. That is the U.S. version. And if you're in the U.K. right now, we're not done. (laughs) And after she screams and it cuts to black, it doesn't end there And it gets back to Sarah in the cave. She wakes up in the same spot she landed in when she fell in the bone room. The escape from the cave was all in her mind. She had a vision of her daughter sitting there in the cave next to her with the birthday cake. And then the camera pans out and you see Sarah there in the cave all alone. So that's how, that's the minor, it's a big difference, but it's a brief short difference between the two. So I, and I honestly can't decide which one I like, I prefer. Yeah. So a lot just happened, but that's the the end of the film. There's a huge battle, some more crawlers. We don't know if Gino's dead though. I think the UK ending is cooler. I think so too. I I want the grim tough of her being ending. trapped there alone. Yeah, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's uh, thematically more solid for yeah. her to be in there at the mm-hmm. end. I, I like so the too. I like the carry ending of her just like screaming and then it cuts to black. But I I do I do. I think I do like her knowing that it's that darkness of she's stuck there. Like yeah. she's not supposed to get out. We've also seen this like recurring uh, imagery of her daughter with the birthday candles. Mm-hmm. Cause she randomly yeah. gets like knocked out like five different times during this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and she always sees it then. I just think that that's cool. Like she's yeah. knocked out once again, she sees it and then realizes. Oh shit. shit. I'm still in the yeah. bone zone. <laughs> Yeah, a bone zone. <laughs> the bone room. Well, I, maybe I'm in the my. Well, I am in the minority here. I almost like the American version better, and here's why: it's almost more horrific because she lives. Mm-hmm. And if you're dead, well, the horror's over. It's like she's probably just going to die. A bunch of creatures are going to eat her, and that's it. But now. It's like she's out and the horror in a way continues. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, it, it feels, it, I can't believe I'm defending the American version of anything. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels more horrific and in a way it feels more complicated. Like now she's got these visions of Juno. She has to live with that guilt of killing Juno. And she's, I, I don't know, it's, it's interesting It almost seems like the simplest approach is that, oh, she's still down there and she gets killed. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you kind of expect in a horror movie, too. I don't know. Honestly, I like them both. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's interesting about this is with movies where there are two different endings, there are – it's usually a polarizing thing. With this, I like both of them. I'd be okay with either of them being the definitive ending. But there's something on theme and extra spooky to me about the the candles and the cake and, mm-hmm. the, and still in there. Anyway, that's, yeah. Well, it's like when you, you know, you have the pleasant dream, you wake up and you realize, oh, God, it was just a dream. It's like, that is horrific. Yeah. yeah. And the UK version is in the car, sees Juno and screams, and you cut to black. When she wakes up in that cave and it pans out, there's, she's, there's no mountain of bones going up to the ceiling. It's, the lighting is different. Um, so there is that sense of that dread and solitude and like finality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The set of the like tower of bones or whatever. So cool. I love the lighting too. Yeah. I've heard I, just like crawling up. It there. is really, it is really cool. I do like that. Well, both versions have this, but I love the fact that she does 
you get to see visually her crawling up to that light and bursting through this little like pad of moss to daylight and it's just the panic and she's still covered in blood and she's just panic stricken that that's an intense scene i love it then she's trying to run and i'm like oh my god are they gonna come running after her so i did it is really cool that she does get to escape so as the viewer you're like oh wow she's gonna make it she got out and then in the uk when you realize you realize they take it all back from you you're like oh mm-hmm. no it's, she's really it's all <gasps> but also like we don't know that juno's dead she doesn't kill her she stabs her in the leg she leaves juno thinking that, you know, Juno's going to die or the crawlers will kill her. And then she, quote unquote, escapes or she stays there and has this vision of her daughter. So we don't really know if Juno's dead or not. Mm-hmm. You know? True. Yeah. The American version has that Texas Chainsaw Massacre quality where it's like, yeah, I guess she lives, but Sarah's entire family is dead. All of her friends are dead. And no one on the face of the planet is ever going to understand what she's <laughs> gone through. Oh, yep. hell no. Hell you no. Know? necessarily a believer. No. <laughs> you yeah. Know? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, remind me to tell you what the plot of the sequel is in a second. Yeah. Sure. But so I, that's one thing with, if you have the uh, American version where it just fades to black, um, it kind of sets it up more to where, like, the sequel would make sense. Sure. It's the only Be- way that... It, because yeah. the sequel makes sense because she's in, I mean, if, if, whatever's in the movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, going back just a little bit, I love the two final girls fighting all the monsters. I love the pool of blood. That's so fucking nasty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I love her like carry like oh, yeah. wide yeah. eyes, like covered in blood. Oh. All very cool visuals. When Gino's like, What happened to you? And you can just tell that Sarah her flip her switch was already flipping very slowly through like the whole second half of the movie. But at this point, she's just fully she's gone she's out she's in a different realm and i just love that she is on revenge mode juno is a piece of trash Mm -hmm. and she just you know is asking her did you see beth die yeah juno's just like yeah (sighs) although Uh, i I do wonder like okay what if juno said yeah i fucking killed her let's get out of here like what would sarah's reaction be. probably the same she and I, maybe she would have um, stabbed her in the heart or the throat instead of stabbing her in the leg which i don't know why she only stabbed her in the leg well it's more fucking brutal hobble you <laughs> so that you're yeah. stuck in that nightmare place but also um like if she kills juno the like two of them are just going to eat juno but if she leaves juno that's more time for sarah to escape because Juno's going to be fighting them and that's true like, you decoy know I mean? yeah decoy yeah i still would have i wanted for her to have that like you did this bad thing to me, I'm going to kill you. Like, personally, myself. <laughs> Stab. <laughs> you know, from experience. Um, from so. experience. Sure, sure. Last time I was deep in a cave with a pickaxe, I did with the exact same thing. With someone who betrayed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I realized this has yet another alien. Oh, I my. wondered why you were making that expression. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what is me. happening? <laughs> so... <laughs> When Sarah comes out of the pool of blood, it's just like the scene when Ripley is inside that pool and she's wading around in aliens. <laughs> Remember that? Well, it's Newt who's down there wading around. Right. Oh, you're right. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Newt is down there wading around, looking around, and there's that the tail of the alien. Well, the alien stands up out of the water. Right. And that's one of the scariest things that happens in that movie. See, I agree with you. But I think that it's even more like when she has to go down into the hive to get Newt and she's pulling. It's another gross scene where they're caked in a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when Newt gets taken and Ripley has to go find her using the tracker. Right. And she's pulling all the cocooning stuff off of her and then they end up in an even grosser scene with the queen. Yes. Sorry, it's, 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 it's obviously not exactly the same as this, but it's this, it's a similar theme. We're in this like the most nightmarish part of this already nightmarish place for yes. s- somehow. And our protagonist is gross now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. Yep. Aliens rocks. It's a great yep. movie. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Four out of five scare meter. <laughs> <laughs> and a cat. And a cat. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. This movie was devoid of cats. No cats. That is the biggest bummer about it. Oh man. <laughs> is that the biggest, is that the scariest thing that there were no cats? <laughs> Um, there should have been a cat at that nasty ass cabin they stay at before this. Mm. Eh, now nah, they didn't need that. <laughs> I like that it was so pared down. It was a slim cast, and there was so much packed in. Yeah. 
Um, there, I love a couple of cool kill scenes. I love it when Sam, she's the one who dies hanging from the top of the cave, Ooh. and she's just like lying arch backed upside down over this giant hole. Mm. It's like I love blood that blood. Str- I love Ooh. that scene. Yeah, that's really good. The pool obviously is amazing. Um, the muck scenes, lots of carry vibes. Honestly, I. When I'm thinking about it, every kill in this is good. Like yes. every one of them looks good, really and, good. and makes you feel like mm-hmm. like like something awful happened. Yeah. Like it's it's even the the like kills on the crawlers are great. Yeah, like, yeah. and the women, the prowess of these women, and again, these aren't just like you know four people you know who went to college together hanging out. These are women who are experienced. I think they have like some physicality to them because they can do all this caving. They go whitewater rafting and yeah. who knows what else they do. So I can see why they would be in, I never questioned like their ability to actually battle like um, 20 crawlers. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like they take them out. They're just a rest in these crawlers. Like maybe they don't have like, we never really get into like what they're like, their build, like their motive. They're just, yeah. basic creatures trying, just to, there. trying to eat yeah yeah um there is backstory for the crawlers like a little bit but the cave paintings are supposed to sort of point to the idea that they are cave people who like evolved down here yeah yeah i was picturing it being something like a golem who was started out as a man sure. and then entered the the cave and then slowly turned into you know yeah. i got i got a lot of golem vibes voldemort vibes a lot of orc yeah, they look like orcs. They look like yeah. orcs, like the teeth and the, the ears. Although, if you see them, um, like, I didn't get this vibe at all watching the movie, but when I watched the special features, they all look like Nosferatu. Every single one. It's just, like, yeah, exactly the same mouth, totally. exactly the same head shape and, like, ears. I think one of them, one of the, the talks behind the scenes mentioned Nosferatu. The behind the scenes also has a lot of really great footage of all of the guys, like, getting their makeup put on and, like... <laughs> singing like a barbershop quartet or <laughs> like really doing good. all kinds of like really funny shit. Yeah. yeah. And also I don't know if you noticed but there's 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 lady crawlers. Mhm. Which yeah, is pretty cool. Right, right, right. There's male yeah. and female crawlers. Isn't there a, I I never really spotted it but I guess there's a kid in there too. Hmm. I don't remember seeing a smaller one. Honestly, I had trouble seeing any of them in the cave. Which is what makes them yeah. scary. Mm-hmm. But they're it they they're very creepy. The noises they make. Ooh, the noises are really good. Their the shrieks little, the little get chitterings. Hurt and killed and stuff. Oof. And the like weird echolocation, like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Pretty effective. Um, um, can I tell you the sequel? <laughs> do it. Yes. Okay. Save me some time. <laughs> well, I'm okay. going to watch it. <laughs> I would just like to say that I like the UK version, but the UK uh, ending doesn't make any sense if you watch the sequel because the sequel is Sarah makes it to the surface. She goes and gets help and then they send a search party down to the cave with Sarah. So Sarah just goes right back in with like seven random people. Which you don't do. Like the same day? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And Juno is still down there. Oh. Not dead, and it's literally just like a copy paste of the end of this movie, mm. where Sarah, like everybody else, fucking dies. Sarah makes it out. I think she even like, or it's not Sarah. There's new people. There's a couple people that are supposed to help. So you've, you've seen this too. No, I read the synopsis, oh, okay. which yeah. is as far as I'm going to get. What, yeah. Whoever the final girl is, literally crawls up that same like pile of bones to get back up to the. T- it's like literally copy pasted. But the, like, isn't there a guy standing outside of it who pushes her back in? What? <laughs> That's fine. That's I read. I read that on Wikipedia. <laughs> Fucking men. There's like a. There's an old guy named Ed or something. Are you serious? I have not seen the movie, but I read the synopsis this morning where there's an old guy named Ed who is at the top of it, and he like kicks her back in there. So then they're she's still stuck in the cave. Uh, she doesn't get out. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. It's, yeah, it's like the longest <laughs> epilogue ever. Yeah, yeah. I. You don't need it. No, you just and it don't. came out three years after. Yeah, <laughs> two thousand nine. Made by the editor yeah. of the first one. Also, if it's okay, apparently it's two days after the events of the first film. There is no way in hell that Sarah is willingly going to go back into that place she just came out of she after what back. she went through <laughs> and how she her state of mind like when she was like running and in that car. There's no fucking way. There's nothing to rescue down there. There's nothing to save. 
There's nothing to save down there. Reminds me of another movie where the main character yeah, goes see. right back and she finds a kid and yeah. nobody yeah. believes her. Exactly. Ripley went hmm, back. That's weird. <laughs> Excuse me, that was 57 years later. <laughs> oh, 57 years later. Oh, yeah, yeah she, she, was, like she drifted stasis. off in space. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's not try to shoot holes in aliens right now. Because <laughs> oh. it's not possible. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> that's awesome. And she was telling him that she didn't want to go. Anyway. I know, but see, that's why aliens was so good. <laughs> Fuck yeah, because she wouldn't want to go back. Right, and they convinced her. was a and whole scene. And Paul Reiser of, convinces her right. because he's a, he's a slimy piece she, of shit. She's just going back in an advisory role. Now, if The Descent 2 mm. had that scene. Maybe Sarah was the in the advisory role because she knew knew how to go through the tunnels. She's the only one who's done it before and yeah. came out alive. I'm going to watch it. There's no fucking way you're she watching remembers ali- You're watching that. Aliens tonight? <laughs> no, I'm watching. <laughs> I'm going to watch Aliens tonight. The sequel? I'm going to watch Descent 2. Part 2? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if I was on that search party... I don't think I'm going to crawl down a fucking mountain of bones to get to whatever we're doing anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> I, that's going to be enough to turn me off. Let's yeah. send in some actual professionals here. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a rescue mission we don't need to, to watch. Um, all right, so we watched a, a movie that we all seem to like. Does anybody have any uh, final thoughts before we... Uh... My final thought is, Amanda, you fucking nailed this pick. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I went outside. I see you guys. I it, picked something outside my, my ballpark, and other people <laughs> liked it. Hey, right on point. You know, you got to stay on brand if you're me. <laughs> Only if you're Amanda, though. <laughs> Actually, I got to go off brand. Dang. <laughs> oh, foiled again. You know what? Oh, uh, I also, I, I also, I want. I like this movie. I wanted to watch it because it was actually scary. Um, it was different. And also, like, the past few movies that we've discussed for this have been kind of, like, lower bar, just, like, silly, cheesy. And I wanted something that had, like, more, like, real horror and some scariness, not just, like, you know, throw off some, you know, some scripted, tropey one line. I, this had so much good stuff to it. Like, I really just wanted a winner. And I'm so happy that you all had seen it and had, like, your own experiences with it. Um, the movie, It's just, it doesn't do too much. It it doesn't. It's an hour and 39 minutes. It packs so much in there. It doesn't try to be what it's not. The pacing is great. It's so well written. Like, there's nothing in there that you could take out or edit or... It's just not... I mean, is it a perfect movie? I it's, don't know what you could... It's... There's so many... I was so surprised. And also, this all-female cast, like, this is a totally different way to do, like, a final girl thing. It's... Mm-hmm. It's not even, I, is it even a horror movie? It's just, it's an adventure. It's a buddy movie. I mean, <laughs> I found so many buds down there. there yeah. it's just, I got like 50 new buds. <laughs> 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 I, I will say though, like some of you, like I literally just watched this for the first time like two weeks ago and I rewatched it in the past few days to, to, to prepare for this. Um, I watched it in a different, watching it twice in the, when I watched it the second time, it didn't have the same effect on me because Again, you guys have watched it many years ago and rewatching it now for the first time, or watch, rewatching it again recently. It didn't, for me, watching it right away the second time, I already knew what was going to happen. I remembered it because I just watched it recently. So it didn't have, I, I did zone out a little bit. I did pick up my phone. I mean, of course, I was trying to take notes or whatever, mm-hmm. but it, watching it immediately after. But the first time, you you can't erase watching it for the first time because it is scary. It is so frightening. It's, everything is just, you there's so many things that are unknown that happen and uh, the whole time I'm like, is this really, how does this movie exist? I never heard of it. And why is it good? Am I supposed to like it? Do people like it? Has anybody else seen it? Like, so I'm, I was just, it was a fun experience for me to do all this in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Any other final thoughts? Or are we moving on? Let's, let's read it. All right. Well, I am the host, so I can't go first. Who wants to tell us how much that they did not like this or how afraid they were or not? <laughs> you know, our our hatred scale. <laughs> we actually, you know what? I'm excited. This show we're, is what scares us, and we're on the hunt for things that scare us, and I'm excited because guess what? I think we found one. We yeah. found yeah. one. Um, well, with that, I'll go. So um, this this movie and how this movie made me feel the first time and also to a, to a slightly lesser extent this time is what I am chasing after with horror movies always. 
I want something that actually scares me. I want something where I like all like I can't think of too many horror movies or movies in general, really. Um, but let's stick to horror movies where I like everyone in it. I like almost every choice. I like almost every feature of it. I like the score. I like the way it looks. I like the creature. I really like the creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, the setting. I mean, the setting is definitely, I, th- I was thinking about this a lot the last few days. I was trying to think of the thing that it, like, what would be the scariest thing in the world to me? I'm very scared of heights. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this might be scarier to me than heights because being trapped. Mm-hmm. And again, going back to the nutty putty cave thing, like that, holy fuck. I, that, that it, it's terrifying. It's hope. It's a hopeless kind of terrifying. Um, with that in mind, I've been, I'm wavering between two numbers here, but for scarometer, I feel like I have to say this is a five for me. I feel like this is the scariest thing that we've watched. I think. I think so too. Because think, correct. Because you have the caving is scary, the creatures are scary, the gross parts of human nature are scary, and you push all that together, and it's just this. It's it's a scary movie. I haven't seen something this scary in in a new movie since two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, I'm I'm gonna go with five for Scare Meter. It's the scariest thing we've watched for sure, and overall. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The only reason I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 is actually kind of speaks to something you just said, Amanda, which is if I watched if I watched this within the year and I remembered every beat of it, some of it might not be quite as effective. Some of it. But again, this is this is a this is a gem of a movie. Like this is something that I I have like wholeheartedly recommended to people over the last couple of decades that it's been out cuz it's just it's not me. <laughs> I feel like that. I feel like I had to have recommended it because I feel I, it's like I. There are two horror movies within that period of time that I can that I can point to that I remember being really surprised by, and it was this. And then this is not it, this other one is not even close to in the same category. But I remember being shocked by how much I liked the Evil Dead remake from oh. 2013 mm-hmm. or whenever that was. Yeah. Um, another alien tie-in. Um, <laughs> So that director is doing the new Alien movie. Oh, my um, God. So, oh, so it yeah. might actually be good. God, it, it better, we'll see. Yeah. It better be. <laughs> but it probably won't be. We should just. There's hope. There's hope. But you know what? I'm also of the opinion, kind of like the sequel to The Descent, just leave a good story alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, mm-hmm. this, this movie's got it. This movie's got it where it, it counts in almost every regard. So 9 out of 10, 5 out of 5, Scare Mater for me. Nice. Ding, ding, ding. Well, when I saw this in the theater, I loved it. I, I thought it was so scary, so effective. And then looking back on it, I was critical of the fact that they showed too much of the crawlers. Mm-hmm. I feel totally different now that I've rewatched it. I thought the crawlers were great. I didn't want them to just stay in the shadows. I thought it added this whole other element to it. I'm not sure even why I thought that originally. So I really like that. When I told my friends that I was watching The Descent, they thought, well, what an odd movie to watch. D-I-S-S-E-N-T. That doesn't really sound <laughs> that scary. Which I didn't even think that movie exists. It's a courtroom thriller. <laughs> yeah. But still you persisted. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So... Um, Thinking about this movie, I'm not sure that I've ever seen anything more effective or scarier. I don't know what would be scarier than this. So I think I have to agree with Matt and give it a five out of five. I Really, I don't know what movie would be scarier. And I don't think I've ever seen anything more effective. It's just layer on layer of horror. Mm-hmm. Killing your friend. Rope burn. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. forgot about the rope burn. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's terrible too. Among everything else that we talked about, Bone Mountain. Sorry, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the new ride at Universal. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we fit all the tropes that are required for our own personal podcast pleasure. <laughs> wow, do we need to start an amusement park? <laughs> And as far as what to rate the movie, geez, uh, 
I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I know what a 10 out of 10 looks like. I'd have to think about it more, but uh, this might do it for me. You know, the, the pacing and the writing, the editing, the acting, you know, it's all great. So I may, I think I'm going to have to go with a 10 out of 10. So this, uh, this gets a perfect rating for Holy me. Holy crap. Awesome. Wow. Holy yeah. crap. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, what do you got, friend? Uh, well, don't start crying yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this movie is very close to perfect for me. Um, the crawlers actually don't really scare me. I actually agree with Christopher. I wish I had seen a little bit less of them because um, when you start seeing like the full body, it's a little too naked guy hanging out in a cave for me but the close-ups of the crawlers are freaky i don't like their teeth at all um but the scarier thing to me is all of the cave stuff that happens earlier and the idea of getting trapped is like so freaky to me especially because of the naughty putty thing which haunts me to this day so for scare meter i'm going to give it a four out of five because it does truly scare me um there are very few movies that get a five out of five for me. Um, overall, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10 because I think it is super effective. Unlike all calibers, it just doesn't, <laughs> it's a little, I'm never going to go in a cave. So I know that I personally will never be in this situation. And so that does sort of dull it a little bit for me. I don't know what else to say about this. I thought it was really good and very scary. Who has been in a cave? I'm never going in one. Yeah. So isn't there a mammoth, I, mammoth cave or whatever? What's that? Mammoth cave? I, I know in of it. but Kentucky? I'm, that's the that's where the outsider, well, part of the outsider takes place in Mammoth Cave. Oh. The Stephen King book. Is that the one that's in Kentucky? I think, I think it so. is. I think yeah, everyone's caves are right. cool. Caves are extremely like, cool. See the stalactites, <clears throat> the stalagmites. Yeah. I did. I did go inside, like in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. And in Estes Park, and exploring some of those or some of those awesome cavey rock things out in Colorado. Yeah, caves where the ceilings are very yeah. high, and you but can see like, the other side. They're big, and you're in a group of people. You're not going to die. Yeah, I've never right. done anything like There's this. There's a lot of daylight in them. The tourist like, ones. Yeah. The ones you right. pay money to go into. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Have you? Yeah, I've been in one or two. I went in a cave in Soviet Georgia. <laughs> of so course. That was probably <laughs> not quite up to world caving standards. I'm not sure, but it was very touristy. Oh, really? Yeah. But my my brother knew of people in California who would go into flooded abandoned mines. And have to scuba underwater. That's the that's what I was talking about earlier. Those yeah. videos that I watched where people, insane people, doing that yeah. stuff. No, thank you. No. What happens? With, anyway. Yeah. Oh, that does bring up a good point. I've seen a lot of movies that are similar to this, where it's like a group of people going somewhere they probably shouldn't be. Um, like particularly recently, I've seen so above as below are you mm. have you guys seen that mm -mm. or the pyramid which is terrible or the deep house which is like a water version of this none of them are nearly as effective or even really scary so for this one to be as good mm -hmm. as it is is like such an outlier yeah, yeah. And i think that's part of why this movie is getting higher scores from us or is having so many good thoughts is it it's so effective it does all the things i don't there's some magic little thing that the the writer director did that put it all in one movie they, they, because you could take the same plot line and give it to a different director or a different writer totally different movie yeah yeah there's just there's some there's that little bit of magic that happens once every 30 years with this movie where it just it's it it gets it gets everything right I want another, not another descent. I just <laughs> want another movie yeah. like this. Yeah. Um, I will say one quick thing that the Mammoth Cave in Kentucky is the world's longest known cave system with more than 400 miles already explored. That's amazing. No reason I to think go I went, it. I think it was in that one when I was a kid mm. on one of our little family vacations, you know, Smoky Mountains. Oh, yeah. Whew. All right. So my rankings and ratings... Um, one, one cool thing I think I will say about me having watches for the first time recently, there's been a lot of horror between 2006 and 2023 that you all have seen. 
Um, and you're always looking for that scary movie, that thing that's going to scare you. And I've seen movies where there is a scene or several mm-hmm. scenes in the same movie that make it a scary movie. But to be sitting on my couch watching this and just being like, oh, the whole time. Mm-hmm. That was really unique and special. And I haven't had that experience with a movie. And I've seen some like scary, there are scary scenes I've th- seen in things. But to be sitting there the whole time. And so I, I am glad that I did put off finding out about this and watching it because I was able to have that like later after watching, you know, how many, you know, 40, 30 years of cinema. You don't even try to find the scary movies. That's a really um, good point. It's like sustained horror for the entirety of the movie and not just like, Yeah, it's oh, not just like scenes. four good scenes. And you, if you watch something, you know, like um, for me, The Conjuring 2, there's scary scenes in, um, like if you want to watch The Babadook or things, that's scary. Stop scrolling your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> scroll them, scroll them, and roll them. Just don't. I didn't scroll um, them. I, I squished them because I was smiling um, so hard. <laughs> well, or like the Baba Duke. There's scary scenes in a lot of movies that we've seen. I haven't seen um, either of those, Baba Duke or Conjuring Two. Oh what, God, what Baba Duke seen, freaked me out. You have to watch Conjuring. the Baba Duke. They're both worth it. Yeah. They, Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 God, Matt. Name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Baba Duke is. I think that's a Baba spooky. Duke, Duke, yeah. Duke. Oh, yeah, it it's really spooky. bothered me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Slender Man. Fuck. Like it's. <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> so. There's scary things that we've seen that exist. So it was a, it was it was a true delight, and that's why I ended up after watching it being immediately like, yep, this is what I'm going to bring to the table for the next episode because it actually sustained scariness. So, um, I was going to give it a four. Matt gave it a five. I'm I'm like Allison. I'm afraid to give anything a perfect out of anything, but I I don't think I've seen a movie that's this sustained scariness where you know what I mean. Go with your heart. I'm just going to give it a five then. Good. I'll just give it a five and uh, cry about it later. Um. <laughs> And then for the film rating, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think I, there's nothing I want to take in, take out. It had just enough amount of crawlers for me. You needed to, to know that there were that many, and I think it would have been hard because I think it lends to the the feeling of them, the sensation of them being trapped and nowhere to go. If you were just hearing little chitters of crawlers all the time, not knowing how many there were, it just added that like, oh no, there are so many of them. Now we are never going to be able to battle them and find a way out and get out. I don't know. It didn't bother me. I was happy to see that many crawlers. And it was, even if there weren't crawlers, period, if it was just them trapped the whole time, it still would have been a scary movie. But having to battle them, we got so many more good gore scenes. The gore, the effects, splendid, splendid. I'm just, yeah. So I'm happy we found something but that scared us. So that's 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 a delight. You did it. So thanks, yeah. thanks for taking this adventure with me, y'all, and going down and descending into the madness. the realm. <laughs> yeah, the madness of aliens. Of, of, of aliens. <laughs> this has been a Amen. <laughs> Matt, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that takes us to the end. Uh, if you like what you heard here today and want to let us know, you can email us at what scares us at aadl.org. Thanks for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. Love each day. Two- <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs>